So do I just, are you going to ask me some kind of a, gee, Gary, what is the spiritual EFT or what is EFT point? Are you going to ask me that? Or? Gee, Gary, what is spiritual EFT and where is EFT going, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, okay. So um, EFT from the beginning, um, I always had a sense that there was an important use of it that either I wasn't ready for or I didn't think the public was ready for yet or something because it's it's use for for everyday issues uh, was so stunning um, for pains and emotional memories and one thing and another and it was so rapid and so quick and so much better than conventional therapies and all this that people were really attracted to that wow you know me my my headaches are gone now and wow all this emotional turmoil I had just doesn't seem to be there anymore and so on um, but to me that was just the beginning of it and in the very early years around 1998 as I recall it I had a workshop on I basically did on video and in there I introduced the idea that in order for EFT to be at its most effective it needs to be through you not by you now that's a short little quick phrase but it's, it's a deep phrase and people would watch me on film and on my workshops etc as I'm dealing with people, I'm tapping, and I somehow come up with some insights, if you will, that seem to be right on. People would seem to wonder, well, where did you come up with that one? Okay, because the client didn't say anything. You just sort of brought this up. And what I was trying to explain to people at that time was that I was, when I would get on stage, I would sort of, turn a switch it's like it wasn't so much me doing the EFT I was listening to guidance people have different words for it God Holy Spirit I mean, depends on where you're coming from you know, in those areas but it was a form of guidance and I would hear a little it wouldn't be a voice I would just get a notion about something and I just bring it up and sometimes I'd bring it up and there would be I mean, I just died. <laughs> you know, there, was, there was no response. It didn't seem to go anyplace. But a lot of times I'd bring these things up and they were right on target. I mean, just like, like, like the bullseye of the target. Clients' eyes light up. People in the audience say, where'd you get that, etc." I got that by letting EFT go through me, not rather than by me. If, if, if it was going by me, then I, then I drop the mental set that, Ah, I am the great therapist in the sky, if you will, who has all the insights in the world, and da 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 da. It's going by me. Hear, hear ye, hear ye. I am speaking. Okay, <laughs> and that there's a there's an ego temptation to do that, but you're going to be much more effective if you get beyond that, and let guidance guide you, if you will. Now. That's a segue to something else, which is going to segue into a more meatier piece of all of this. Um, in 1988, I woke up one morning, and I had a list of things to do in my mind. I started going over them, and I, I tend to create a whole lot more for me to do than is possible. So I was going through this list, and it was, it, it, it was an inconceivably big list that I had committed to. And I got very frustrated with myself um, and basically said, who needs this? Now, there were more four-letter words in it than that because I, <laughs> I was really emphasizing all of this to myself. But the important thing I want to mention about this, even though it seems like kind of a routine event, was I literally at that moment was so frustrated that I gave up the world. I let go of the world. 
strange things to say if you've never done that. But I let go of the world, and the moment I did that, I had this spiritual experience that is indescribable. I've tried to describe it in many, many, many ways before. It is something like what you may have read about with people's near-death experiences, where suddenly, you know, they're in this, this loving place. Um, I, I, I'm going to give you some other other descriptions if I can. I don't don't know where to go with that. But you, you've read the near death. I had what amounts to a near death experience, although I wasn't near death. Okay. But it was like it was like my current experience now in this life, like yours is, I suspect, is it's like we're in a bubble, and we're looking outside of our eyes, and we see the inside of this bubble, and the inside of this bubble is this world. It's the other people in this world. It is the buildings in this world, the oceans. It's the outside world is there. All the beliefs in the world is all there in this bubble. And it's like when I had this experience of letting go of the world, it's like somebody came along and put a pin in that bubble and it broke. And the moment it broke, everything that was outside of it, which was nothing, and I, I need to emphasize this world, word, nothing but just pure love. That's all there was there. There wasn't nothing this world has there was no arguments there was no guilt there was no competition there was no there was nothing but love it was an extraordinary experience and and when you if you've had that experience one thing you know about it even though mine was brief is that is the true reality what we deal with here in this world of separation where we seem to have separate bodies, etc., is not the real world. It's more like a dream. Now, I need to ask a question of the audience. How many of you have had an experience something like I just described? Well, look at that. That's maybe 25 or 30% of you. Okay. Now, if I were to ask this question of another person, segment of people, people who let's say are construction workers, for example, that aren't therapists and involved in emotional things and so on, I'm likely to get one or two hands out of 100, 200 people. Okay, We have a much higher percentage here, so I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with that. Okay, Now, when I was in that experience, um, I, I could at that point because the experience was so pure, if I had been able to, let me say it differently, if I could reaccess that now, still, I'll say it differently still, if you could access that experience now and maintain it, keep it, not have it come and go, but keep it, your loving presence would be so pure that you could walk into a hospital and your mere presence would begin healing people. Tumors would subside. Lung congestion would go away. All the things in the hospital would start to subside. Not because you're the great healer in the world, because what you represent is this, this indescribably intense sense of love, that love in and of itself will heal anything around it. They, um, I don't pound the table for Jesus and other spiritual masters because I've never met them. Okay? I, at least I don't, I don't recall meeting them. But the stories that we get from Buddha and Jesus and so on and so forth was they were able to do this themselves. There were no hospitals at the time, but they would you know, raise the dead and cure the sick and so on. In a, in a variety of ways. And having had that experience, I can I can tell you that that's the sort of thing that you and I can do if we can achieve that state and maintain it. How am I doing so far? Am I losing anybody? I mean, yes, no, what? Who thinks I'm too woo-woo? Who thinks I'm, I'm too woo-woo? Let me see your hand. Okay. <laughs> Nobody yet? Okay. All right. <laughs> just, just checking, folks. All right. So, one of my goals uh, is to get back to that state. I've never, been, I've tried to get back. 
but I've never gotten there and I want to get back to that and EFT can be an extraordinary tool in that regard but in order to use it that way we need to really understand how to use it um, in its more skillful sense um, the the folks that are that are using you know tapping scripts and global uh, approaches and things like that are really on the surface of EFT we need to get down into the depths into the in-depth quality the skillful uses of EFT to get to what I'm at least for the moment going to call optimal EFT so what I'm going to be doing in time is to gradually start developing on our website tools that we can use I'm going to be probably be having some conversations with people uh, that have approached this kind of thing themselves and I'm going to be guiding not only myself but those who want to join us uh, in a series of experiences where we're going to start using EFT and perhaps other tools to get to this state now are we actually going to get to the let me call it the Jesus or the Buddha state where we are nothing but pure love etc um, I don't know if anybody's really going to get there including myself because it is a very lofty goal however what we can do and what I really want to do with those people who are truly motivated in this area is to approach it if this is the ultimate and we're here if we can get to here we're far far more effective as people in the healing professions than we would be ordinarily we're far far more healthy ourselves if we can get here that's better still and here is better still and here is better still so it's a matter of it's a journey it's how high up this ladder do you want to get how much are you willing to dedicate to this etc um, I will say this about that, that approach I, I don't think it's going to be an approach where the where if your motivation is ah with this I'm going to be the great healer in the sky and become rich and famous that's not going to be our goal because if that becomes your goal then you're going to miss one of the biggest parts of it now let me go back a second here I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to segue up for a while from my spiritual experience into quantum physics which validates what that experience is all about the quantum physicists of this world at least those that I've had any contact with know that what I'm talking about is true but they've the ones I talk about haven't experienced it okay so let's go to quantum physics for a moment we don't need to be massive scientists here but the quantum physicists are 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 our elite premier scientists in this part of our history um, they study very 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 tiny things by that I mean atoms they study atoms and parts of atoms and parts and part and parts of parts of atoms okay the very 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 tiny tiny things and they find when you study those things with which we are all made up we are all made up of these atoms okay they are studying the very nature of our existence when they do that okay they find there are several findings about that that are that are mind-boggling one of them is there is no such thing as time time does not exist yet for us time is everything I mean we're running out of time right now okay <laughs> you got here on time you'll leave on time you know time 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 it's about everything okay but quantum physics tells us it doesn't exist but for us it's obvious okay number two there's no such thing as space space does not exist you and I are right now 10,000 miles apart as the world sees it I'm in California you're in England but that space does not exist the space between each of you does not exist it is not there even though it is a clearly and obviously and convincingly part of our experience 
Okay. And the third thing that I'm going to point out here, and this is the one that we really need to spend a little energy on, and that is there is no such thing as separation. Nothing is separated from anything else. When you look out your window and see a tree, that tree appears to be separate from you, but it is impossible for that tree, for a group of atoms to get together and create some separate thing called a tree. That is impossible to happen. And yet, our eyes see it all the time. You're seeing me as a separate person from you. I see you with my eyes as separate from me. You see you're separate from each other. But separation does not exist. It is impossible. That means you're insane. <laughs> well, you laugh. <laughs> Hello, my name is Gary and I am insane. Okay. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. So now we have a major chore in front of us. It is a huge task. Our senses and everything about us convincingly tells us, yes, there's time, yes, there's space, and yes, we're all separate. Okay. Now, along comes a number of spiritual documents. Some of them are old, some of them are new, etc. There's the I am stuff. Um, I, I happen to study A Course in Miracles. How many of you are familiar with that? Can I see your hands? The numbers? Okay, some aren't, etc. Uh, I, uh, I need to emphasize I do not push at all. A Course in Miracles. Just a minute. Somebody wants to talk to me on the phone. How rude. Oh, just a second. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, from A Course in Miracles point of view, it happens to be my spiritual path. It does not need to be yours. And so anything I do from this point forward may for me borrow from A Course in Miracles and its principles. It doesn't have to do that for you. Okay, So I want to, I want to make that clear. But A Course in Miracles, um, along with other spiritual items, describes this experience that we are having as a dream. It is like we are sleeping. Just as you have a dream at night when you go to sleep and you have dreams, uh, in those dreams, do you not violate reality as you know it? Are you not at one point in your dream playing bridge with your friends and the next point in a, in a parachute above Japan? Okay, boom, like that. You violate all of reality, but it, it seems very real to you at the moment. Would I be correct? Okay. And so what happens is you wake up eventually, and there was this dream. And you look back at it, and, oh, that was a dream. So nothing that happened in the dream has any impact on you to speak of. You go about your life because now you're in reality. Okay. The point we try to make here is this experience we're having right now in what we call reality is actually a dream. And if we can break, pierce the bubble with that pin and let nothing but love come in, that is the reality. Okay. So... Our chore, our job, is to get beyond this mistaken dream, tiptoe, if we can, into the reality, raise our level of love higher and higher and higher and higher, see things, see your clients, see yourselves, ourselves, not as separate individuals that have different issues and different beliefs and all this kind of stuff, but rather all one, nothing is separate. The client that you're dealing with is in fact a version of you and you are a version of them. And while it seems like you are teaching them, they are, if you get it right, they are teaching you. Learning and teaching become 
the same thing. It's a different mindset. But when you get to that mindset, again, we're approaching it, okay? The more you approach it, the more you can use guidance, as I was doing on stage, you know, with, with clients. Uh, the more these things come to you from outside your normal awareness, the more your mere presence in front of your clients and your friends, etc., becomes healing in and of itself. That doesn't mean, it depends on where you get on this scale, on this scale as it's approaching. It doesn't mean you're going to walk into a hospital at this point and all the cancer tumors disappear. It doesn't mean that. But it does mean that people will see something different in you. The way you talk the way you see things, the words that come out of your mouth, the metaphors that you use, the rapport you have with the clients gets to a higher level so that your mere presence now becomes more healing. And I think I forgot the name. I think the name was Sarah that I was talking to earlier. We're talking about this, these issues that were you know, under, underneath normal or, or that, had a, that had a more spiritual foundation to it. This is where you're going to start getting to those things. This is where you're going to start getting insights to those things. This is where the foundational problems that the clients deal with actually have to do with this illusion, this dream of being separated. And you're not going to likely, with most clients, say, oh, gee, you know, your problem is you're separated, so just don't think that anymore. Okay, <laughs> that's going to go no place with most of your clients. Okay, probably doesn't go much of any place with a lot of you right now. Okay, because we can't just turn a switch and do that, but we can approach it and we can get better at it. And and then when the client is coming up with these more foundational issues, our own understanding is going to allow us to address them differently than we would have ordinarily. Um, and we're going to get more headway with them. And then we will learn from them some things which now enhances our own, you know, our, our own health, mental and physical and other, otherwise, and, and so on it goes. So this dance goes on. Mm -hmm.